This is going to be another question and answer. And this question was, what should a Christian do to excel in the faith? Look at 2 Peter 3.18. It says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. So the more you learn about Jesus Christ, the more you will grow as a Christian. It said, Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So the best way to get to know Jesus Christ is to let the Word of God consume you. Make it your hobby. Now, the person who asked this question is already established in a daily Bible reading plan, and this is key, because the Bible says in Isaiah 34, 16, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. Read it when you feel like it. Read it when you don't feel like it. Read it when you understand it, and read it when you don't understand it. Reading is key. Something just as important is studying. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Approach the Bible like you would a puzzle. Start on the outside edges first. Start in Genesis. Read each chapter and write down a summary or sentence describing each chapter. Really, if you are a new Christian or you just don't know much about the Bible, start in Genesis, read a chapter, write a summary about the chapter, if you do this for each chapter, you're going to know a lot more about Genesis when you get done. And a lot of times when we're reading, we're not paying attention to what we're reading. If you will focus on having to write a summary or a short sentence for each chapter, you'll focus more on what you're reading because you, if you didn't pay attention, you'll get to the end of that chapter and you won't know what to write for a summary or for a sentence. So it forces you into paying attention to what you're reading and not just... So, like a lot of people just focus on getting through their chapters for the day and not focusing on what they're getting out of those chapters for the day. So if you write a short sentence or summary for each chapter, it's forcing you to pay attention. And while you won't know every detail of the book, you will have a general idea of what the book, of, the book is about. Do a book a week, and in about a year and a half, you will complete an overview for each book of the Bible. I try to take a look at a certain book of the Bible every week, even if I've already done it. I do it over and over. At the same time, get a chapter of the Bible to start on and work your way verse by verse through a book of the Bible. Now, this takes a little bit longer. But Isaiah 28, 9 through 10 says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, for precept must be upon precept, Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So you're going to go verse by verse, line upon line, through a certain book of the Bible. Most Bible teachers recommend 1 Thessalonians first. So if you work your way verse by verse through a chapter a week, instead of, you know, we talked about going through Genesis in a week, writing down a short sentence for each chapter, you're going to go a little bit slower for 1 Thessalonians, you'll... Do one chapter of First Thessalonians a week, verse by verse, just one chapter a week. You could have First Thessalonians done in a little over a month. And then, hey, you know that book a lot more than you knew it before. I start with that one or with any of the Pauline epistles would be good, mostly because they are shorter and they have a lot of doctrine on salvation that will help you. First uh, Peter 2 2 says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. You want to add fuel to that desire, and the more you study and read and learn, the more you will grow and desire the word. You want to get fat, spiritually speaking, with the word. Get to a point where it takes more to fill you up. At the same time, I highly recommend Revelation as your first book that you go through, verse by verse, because this helps people get interested in the Bible. And it's the first one I went through verse by verse as a new Christian. I recommend finding someone who knows more Bible than you do and get help from them. He won't be perfect. He won't be without error. He's a man. Uh, he will believe things that are wrong. And you won't agree with everything he says. But every new Christian needs a good mentor in the faith. And Proverbs 24, 6 says, For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. 
and in multitude of counselors there is safety and multitude of counselors uh, since i've been saved i've had and still have a lot of mentors that i ask questions and advice from men like my pastor donnie dalton danny castle david hoffman and others i recommend bible believing study bibles and commentaries you know a lot of men say let the holy ghost teach you and throw out commentaries and throw out the study bibles but that's a very stupid statement and it's also dangerous proverbs 29 <clears throat> 15 says the rod and reproof give wisdom but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame and you can apply that spiritually to yourself as a baby in christ because you're a child in the faith. Uh, you don't want to be left to yourself. The Holy Ghost is the one who teaches you. But these people who say to just throw out everybody else and just listen to the Holy Ghost, these guys are forgetting something. They're forgetting that God uses men. The Holy Ghost uses men to teach you. Men who labor in God's words are God's gift to the church. Ephesians 4, 11 through 12 shows this where it says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So where are you finding that you're supposed to throw out all the study Bibles and commentaries when God gave teachers for, to perfect you? and to edify you. So I highly recommend any commentaries and books by men like James Knox, Peter Ruckman, Bob Alexander, Kyle Stevens, Jack McElroy, David Walker, and many other preachers and authors. And you'll see that these men don't agree with each other on everything, but they are all Bible believers with the right gospel And 1 Timothy 5.17 says, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Watch out for men who are always telling you to not listen to other teachers, to not listen to other preachers, and to just listen to the Holy Ghost. Watch out for people like that, because what pretty much what they're saying is they want you to throw out all your study Bibles and commentaries, but yet they want you to listen to them. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever for you to just listen to them and learn from them, but to throw out everything else. That sounds a little shady to me. But find someone who has labored. And uh, I've always, always, the entire time I've done studies on here, recommended other people. Watch out for somebody that only recommends themselves and thinks that you should only listen to them. There's a lot more preachers and teachers, and uh, evangelists, and everything else out there that you could also listen to that you would learn from, if not learn more from, than you would from this channel. A temptation for a new Christian is to get self-righteous and think that they know more than elders in the faith. And when they see something a man teaches that they disagree with, they throw them out. They throw the baby out with the bathwater. They throw out the chicken with the bone. But you have to realize Bible believers are individuals. They're different. You can't put them in a box. You shouldn't put them in, the bo in a box and make them and want them to be just like you. There's some things we can't disagree on, like the authority of the Bible, the deity of Christ, the gospel, and so on and so forth. But there are some things that Bible believers have different interpretations on, and that's just how it is. Just because there's this little minor thing over here that you disagree with them on, that don't mean you should throw out everything that they've ever done. In Nehemiah 8.8, 8, it says, So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. So you can see that there's nothing wrong with a man helping you understand the reading, giving you the sense of the verse. As long as he doesn't make you think that you have to come to him to understand the words. While we... While it's good to have pastors and teachers, don't ever think that you have to have them to understand the Bible because you don't. Now, it's good to have them to help you, but you don't have to. Some great advice that 
Danny Castle gave me one time was, don't throw out preachers. Every preacher has something about them that the devil will use in, a, in an attempt to get you to turn them off. And there are certain men who God has greatly used. And if you turn them off over some silly reason, you cheat yourself out of a huge blessing. So I do recommend study Bibles. Two study Bibles that I know of that do not change the Word of God in their notes is the Ruckman Reference Bible and the Common Man's Reference Bible. I recommend those two study Bibles. Psalm 68, 11, The Lord gave the Word. Great was the company of those that published it. At the same time, I highly recommend you get the wide margin. The Common Man's Reference Bible comes in a wide margin, and the Ruckman Reference Bible has a wide margin now as well. Now, these, these Bibles are a little bit on the, on the higher side, especially the Ruckman Reference Bible, but you can get these in paperback and hardback at a much lower price, and then you could get a wide margin Bible off churchbiblepublishers.com. Bearing Precious Seed also has a very nice wide margin Bible at an affordable price. So you could get that along with one of those paperback or hardback uh, study Bibles by Ruckman and Hoff, or Hoffman. And then you're going to be on your way to, you know, having somebody that can, can, can lead you. And I would, I suggest having, you know, a multitude of counselors. You know, don't just say, well, this guy is right on everything and I'm going by everything he says. No, don't do that. You know, get, get a, a variety of teachers, Bible believers that have the right gospel. That way you stay more balanced. You know, you don't, just focus on what they focus on. You can focus on what... Because, see, people have different burdens. This this pastor or teacher has a certain burden that he talks about a lot. And then this other pastor has a different burden that he talks about a lot. So if you listen to all of them, then you'll have all the burdens. But recently I got the, the new Interleaf Bible from Church Bible Publishers. I highly recommend it. You want to have a Bible that you can live in. I mean, one you can dig into and make your own. One where you feel comfortable in it, where you can put your pajamas on in it and take off your shoes and socks and wiggle your toes around and make yourself at home in that Bible. That's what you want to have. You want to get one that you like. But like I said, I highly, I highly recommend wide margin Bibles. Or if you don't like a wide margin Bible, or if you can't afford one, just get you a notebook and carry that notebook with the Bible and have all your notes down in it. Job 23, 12 says, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. You need a Bible that's so much your own, you can eat it with your elbows on the table and lick your fingers when you get done, and don't even wipe off your face with a napkin when you get done. This will solve most of your pet sin problems. You'll be busy studying the Holy Bible that you will see your pet sins get less and less frequent. Get a good dose of Bible reading, studying, and memorization. And this will take a lot of your free time. Get a good balance of preaching and teaching. Listen to a good teacher for a while. And then throw on some Red Hot Preaching by Danny Castle or Old School Phil Kidd or Donnie Dalton. And that is how you'll stay clean. The next question that this new Christian had, this young Christian had, was how to deal with lost family members and worldly parents who he has to deal with daily in his own home. He has to deal with hearing wicked music and movies on the TV in his home. The first thing to realize is that as a Christian, you aren't in this alone. I'd say a good majority of Christians suffer with this same problem. And 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. The same thing that this young man is going through is being experienced by other Christians in the world. And I know you have probably heard the expression, in the world, but not of the world. Every day I have to get up and go to work where I hear cussing, dirty jokes, filthy music, and everything else. And that's just how it is because of who the God of this world is. 2 Corinthians 4, 4, And whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. I have to hear certain music at work. I have to hear cussing at work. It's not a sin on my part. As long as I don't laugh at the jokes. 
I don't sing along with their songs, and I just be a light. When dealing with lost people, I don't even tell them to stop what they're doing. I don't tell them to stop cussing. Uh, stopping what they're doing isn't going to help them in the long run. The only thing that will help them is giving them the gospel. The only thing that will help them is for them to see me reading my Bible and living right and how I'm a lot more happy and better off than they are. But I want to mix that living right in front of them with giving the gospel. You don't just live right in front of them and expect them to get saved that way. You have to give them the gospel too. Because there's a lot of people that say, I don't, I don't tell them about Jesus, I don't give them the gospel, I just live right in front of them. No, you want to give them the gospel. I mean, you don't want to cram it down their throat. But you want to, over time, you're giving them the gospel, you're living right in front of them, and this has a great effect on people. Now, this young Christian situation is with his parents, which is a lot harder to deal with. He's explained to me that he's explained to them of the evils of Hollywood and the entertainment industry, and they say it's just entertainment. But as Christians, we know that being entertained by sin is wrong. Now, the lost world doesn't know that, and worldly Christians may not realize that, but God has showed us that. We don't want to have pleasure in the sins of others. This is a tough situation because this is the young man's parents. So what does he do in this situation? He's, he's saved. He's trying to live right. They're living wrong, and he has to live in the same house with them. Well, Ephesians 6, 2, and 3 says, Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. So the question is, how can he honor his father and mother when they're telling him he should watch wicked things on TV and things like that, and that it's just entertainment? The answer is that the Bible gives the order of authority. And that order of authority goes God first, then the father, then the mother, and then the children. If the parents tell the child to do something wrong, then what God says overrides what the parents say. And the child would actually be honoring them by not doing the sinful things that they told him to do. In Acts 5.29 it says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. This is true in any situation. It's true for a wife when her husband, she's supposed to honor her husband, but she's supposed to honor God first. If he tells her to do something wrong, then she's supposed to do what God said. It's like that for your government. If the government tells you to do something wrong, you do what God said over what the government said. If a parent tells a child to do something that's wrong, he still obeyed God rather than men. Now, with that being said, even though the young man is trying to live right and may have more morals than his parents, he is still supposed to do what his parents say if those things are not wrong to do. So no back-talking, no arguing, no telling them what to do. Uh, I wouldn't tell them what to do. Even though that they may be living worldly and you're trying to live right, it would not be right for you to tell them what to do. As a new Christian, you will many times think that you know everything, but you don't know everything. And 1 Corinthians 8, 2 says, And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. And there are some things that his parents would still be wiser than him about. The best thing he can do is to do what his parents tell him, and that, the, as long as those things don't go against the Word of God, <clears throat> and he's to let them see him reading his Bible, using the right kind of language, honoring what they say, trying his best to abide by their rules, when those rules don't contradict the Word of God. They tell you to go clean your room, go clean your room. They tell you to be back at a certain time, be back at a certain time. Uh, clean up around the house. You know, pull your weight around the house. It's like Peter explains about the relationship between a saved wife and a lost husband. In 1 Peter 3, 1, it says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wife. So the saved wife should still be in subjection to her husband who is lost and treat him right, and he can be won over by the conversation of the wife. Her conversation is the way of life. She lives in the way she talks. At the same time, this young Christian could win his parents over by the way he lives and by the way he talks. Both. You need to act right. You need to talk right. I don't believe he should tell them to stop what they're doing because it's their home. They're his parents. But he can subtly show them how it is wrong by not watching those things himself. When I got saved 10 years or so ago, I was young. I still lived at home, and I got rid of my TV and my CDs. I didn't tell anyone else in the house to get rid of their stuff. It wasn't my place. It wasn't my house or my rules, but I did have an effect on 
family members, and it reminds the people in your house that what they're doing is wrong. Now, if you're the man of the house, if you're the father, if you're the husband, then it's your house and you can clean house. But as a kid, it's a lot different. It's not your house. You're to, still to be in subjection to your parents. And if it gets too bad and you're able to move out, then I would move out. But all young Christians can do in this situation, pray for their parents, be a light in their life, and abide by their rules as long as they don't go against what God says. And that's how you have a perfect balance in this situation.